Very good. Important. The osteotome doesn't go into the sinus. It's the bone graft that is lifting the membrane. That's one of the mistakes doctors are making, even in textbooks. And I gather this picture from a textbook. You see the osteotome in the sinus. Don't do it. We don't need it. You thin it out. You thin the sinus membrane enough so your bone graft does the lifting. Okay. Let's do another case now with two implants. It's the same principle. We have a mesial abutment to a three unit bridge. There was no bone for the molar implant. That's probably why they got an implant to begin with. Once this tooth is extracted, we are planning for two implants. Here it is. Here's the vertical root fracture. We let this patient heal two months of healing. Here's our computerized planning. Uh, this is a great case to start. By the way, that's the most common scenario. Uh, how many bridges fail every week in your practice? Not necessarily your bridges, but even your bridges after 10, 20 years can fail. Teeth can crack. Teeth can get infected. They can develop peri disease, peri infection that are not uh, treatable. And then you got yourself an implant opportunity. Okay. So here's the planning. Okay. What's the strategy for this sinus lifting? Okay. Why are we going to do that? Uh, here's the site. I recommend when you look at the site, look at the soft tissue. Uh, don't be dogmatic. This, the, the soft tissue is not always like what you see in textbooks. Okay. Sometimes they're not very regular. There's some scar tissue. Okay. There's uh, certain levels of soft tissue. So I like to follow the scar. There's a scar here that was left from the extraction process. As it, this is just how this patient heals. I would follow the scar and reflect a full thickness flap to the buckle. So I have a visualization of the bone. Uh, maybe I could have done a flapless approach. But if you want to be safe, uh, a flap design, a crestal incision following the scar is not a bad thing to do. And here it is. Here's your flap design. Okay, so follow the scar. Uh, step number one, drill to the floor first. That's your initial osteotomy. Remember the step, find the sinus floor. And when you find it, start your osteotomy. So I found the floor. It's right there. I'm starting to widen it. By the way, this is from one of our broadcasts. I felt like this was a Pretty good illustration. Start the widening process to four millimeters. Uh, don't start lifting before you widen. And then start the lifting. Get your domes in place. Uh, keep taking x-rays and sinus lifting. I, I take a lot of x-rays. I repeat the process as needed. You don't need to lift for 20 millimeters or 13. All you need to have is 10, 11 millimeters of bone height for a molar. You want to have uh, you know, the same level for a, a premolar. And then you can place the implants at the same time as long as you have the native bone supporting it. Okay, it's a pretty simple uh, and streamlined process. Here it is right after the placement. Okay, you see my molar is mostly in native bone or maybe 50% in native bone. The premolar has a little bit of sinus lifting. The tip of the implant is anchoring the floor. Uh, here's my flap sutured around the healing abutments. And here's the uh, restoration uh, with obviously screw retained uh, access to the restoration and uh, about six years follow up on this case. Great implant opportunity, a picture that uh, talks a thousand, you know, says a thousand words. Uh, it, without the sinus lifting, this case uh, would not have been possible. This is the implant opportunity we're talking about. So. Keep an eye on the dome or the domes. Take a look at them. Don't be overzealous. Don't overcondense bone. Every dome can explode. Okay. We can, I'm not saying you can you, you, you can't do multiple osteotomes one by one. The reason we usually don't is because every time you do an osteotome, there's a risk of perforation. So if you do three in a row, four in a row, well, then you can perforate four times as, versus one risk of a lateral. So you know, when you start getting into more than one implant, you want to make sure that you have uh, actually um, more than more than uh, you know. You, you choose the lateral window approach, okay? Uh, and, and again, not saying it's not possible. Not saying I haven't done it. Obviously, I'm showing you uh, you know multiple implants with you know two domes, three domes. But generally speaking, because sometimes if you over tap, if you over condense. If you're not careful, some of the bone graft can ex uh, escape. 
and that needs to be managed. And there's a solution for that as well, okay? Uh, some sinuses can extend into the canine. The principle is the same. There's no different approach. You find the floor, you widen the osteotomy, you start condensing the bone, you can place your implant and you can see the nice dome. It's not gonna look like a dome, it's gonna look like a sideways dome, but uh, the principle is, is the same.